Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strauser, Principal and Chief Executive here at Bright Path. And in episode 247, I want to talk about how resilience leaders can lead their company through uncertainty. How can you help lead your company through the kinds of uncertainty that we see in the world today? We've talked in previous episodes about how geopolitical unrest, for example, is one of the leading concerns for top management, for executives and boards of directors. And to me, that's just one of the ways in which resilience leaders need to think about leading through uncertainty within their organization. So the first way as I think about it is to make sure that you have an adequate crisis management framework and plan in place. And I don't mean that you have a detailed scenario-based plan for every possible permutation of a disaster that can impact you, but I'm talking about that idea of a crisis framework that we've spoken about on the podcast before, that you have a way to gather leaders together to escalate um, an incident to your corporate crisis management team and your executives to collaborate, to get that group together, to collaborate and make decisions, and then communicate the results of those decisions. And it really, to me, it really starts there, that you have this consistent way that when this uncertain, unpredictable incident occurs, whatever it is, that you are executing a consistent way in which to manage that crisis. But I have 10 other ways that um, resilience leaders can help manage and lead your organization through uncertainty. Think of it as a mix of strategic insight, um, practical action, um, but all things that focus and drive resilience. So here are 10 ways that a resilience leader like yourself can effectively guide your organization through such times. The first is to think about your risks that your organization is faced with and that you're continuously assessing and updating the risk landscape that you see in front of you so that you are anticipating and mitigating potential disruptions. That includes identifying new risks and reevaluating existing risks that you see ensuring that your organization is always prepared for the unexpected. For example, if you operate in the United States right now, one of the risks in front of you should be the outcome of the November 2024 presidential elections. Not because one candidate or the other uh, influences the risk involved, but instead, I predict, a lot of experts are predicting, that we're going to see civil unrest related to this, and particularly under that time between the election and the incoming presidential transition in, in January of 2025. So to me, that is a risk that organizations should be planning for, and many of you already are. Number two is just good strategic communications, and I mean your communications with leaders across the organization, that you are maintaining open, transparent, and consistent communication with all of your stakeholders. And when when uncertainty strikes uh, or you're in this period of uncertainty, it's critical that you're communicating not just the what and the how, but also the why of decisions and changes in the organization. But those partnerships with your stakeholders become even more important. Number three is flexible planning, that you are designing um, adaptable strategies that allow the organization to identify and pivot very quickly as you uh, um, as, as, or in response rather to changing conditions. Um, that involves, uh, as we talked about, creating maybe specific contingency plans that are robust but flexible enough to accommodate different scenarios and different triggers that may occur. Number four is good leadership cohesion. That you are strengthening the alignment um, amongst the organization's leadership team so that you have a good unified approach to decision making and crisis management. Cohesion at the top will help reinforce confidence down through the organization. Number five is empowerment, that you are empowering leaders at all level by delegating authorities and responsibilities, which enhances and enables their ability to make decisions quickly and effectively in response to evolving situations. Number six is strengthening the culture in your organization, particularly the resilience culture. Do you want to continue to foster a culture of resilience by encouraging openness, adaptability, and mutual support? A resilient culture I see as a crucial background, crucial backbone rather, uh, for navigating these periods of uncertainty. 
Number seven is just continuing, continuing to invest in the training and development of your team to equip employees with the skills and knowledge they need to handle crises and uncertainty. Regular training, uh, tabletop exercises, simulation exercises, if you're ready for that, can really enhance the organization's overall resilience. Number eight is leveraging technology. Continuing to use technology to enhance communication, monitoring, and management of risks, um, and advanced analytics, real-time data, digital platforms, and even AI can play pivotal roles in understanding and navigating complex scenarios. Number nine is continuing to build your external partnerships, that you are strengthening those relationships with your external partners, suppliers, local authorities, uh, local, state, and national emergency management, uh, other relevant stakeholders, um, because those relationships can really provide critical support and resources during challenging times. And then lastly, it's your own continuous learning and development. It's that you continue to learn from each experience that you have, that you continuously refine and improve resilience strategies, that you keep being curious about what's happening in our industry, and, and then regularly review and adjust your plans based on those new insights and the feedback you receive to enhance your company's capacity to manage future disruptions. So these are 10 ways on uh, 10 ideas about how you can continue to lead through uncertainty as the resilience leader in your organization, particularly in the year uh, that I think we're going to have from in terms of the challenges in front of us in 2024. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.